everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show and welcome to Click 3D. This is the program where we talk about laser scanning, 3D technologies like photogrammetry, hand scanners. We also talk about hardware, software, techniques, and every now and then we get to interview some pretty cool people. So today what I thought I would do is look at how you can measure things in 3D. And by that, what I mean is if you're measuring something locally here and you have a point on a wall and maybe a point on the floor, how can you measure the 3D distance? Now normally, you know, if you have something like this on the wall and uh, excuse, we're doing some blood stain work here, so it's a little bit of a mess. Um, you can pick a point in a corner, something like here, and then measure to here just by using a tape measure, right? You can sort of ex extend it along and pretty easily, you know, grab a measurement, no big deal. But what happens when those points don't coincide on a plane, or maybe you can't take the tape measure and easily, easily put it from the wall down to the floor or something like that? Um, sometimes there's things that are blocking or that are in your way. So this little formula that you can use allows you to take coordinates of a point, two points, and then calculate the 3D position. And a good example of that would be something like this. I have a little cross that I put on the wall here with a piece of tape, and then I put another one up here. So there's no way that I can really drag the tape across and kind of hold it together. Um, now, I'm probably gonna need somebody to help me in order to get some coordinate data, but basically what I'm gonna be doing is just measuring linearly. So what I mean is starting from a corner, measure over in this direction, so many uh, centimeters or inches, and then kind of come up from here. And then I'll have to use the same reference point and kind of measure up, come across here, and then come across here to get the height or something like that. Now there are some limitations to this method and that is that things need to be relatively square or perpendicular and you have to be able to measure these two points in an XYZ coordinate system, a Cartesian coordinate system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the computer and I'm going to talk about the formula and how it works and then we're going to test it out. We're going to see if it works, for example, like manually, if I measure something and or if I go into 3D software, maybe that's even I can pick two points in 3D software and then figure out what happens from there. So let me go back to the computer and we'll start from there. OK, so I'm back at my desk here and the computer and well, Unfortunately, it means you're going to have to do some math here in order to uh, properly make some calculations here. So the first thing is, um, I'm just going to go through the basic equation, what it means and how it works, and then we can do a very quick example. So first thing is, if you imagine that you have the corner of the wall, and I'm just going to pick two arbitrary points here. So you have point P1 and then you have point P2. And you want to calculate the distance between these two points. Okay, and they could be anywhere in, you know, sort of 3D space. Doesn't matter how far they are or how close they are. And of course, you know, hey, if they're really close, then, you know, you can always, um, you know, put a tape measure there or something like that. But this is useful for, for research or, for example, when you're doing blood stain pattern analysis or if you're looking at bullet trajectories and things like that. So um, what you do is you start from your 0, 0, 0 location or basically your origin and you move across in your X. So this will be your X value. Then you move across in your Y value and then you move up in the Z direction. Now downstairs I actually had these reversed. I said this was Y or X, but it doesn't matter. Which, whichever way you choose, you need a value here, a value here. And these have to be at right angles to one another. So basically my point one has a measurement of X1, Y1, and Z1. And that gets me to this position right here. Now this point is exactly the same thing. I'm going to do uh, move in the same directions and keep these, these measurements in the same order. Except now I'm going to end up over here. So point two is going to have X2, Y2, and Z2. Those will be the coordinates. So over here, if we look on the left, point one, P1, X1, Y1, Z1, point two is going to be X2, Y2, Z2. Now the distance formula is this guy over here. Okay, so what we're going to do basically is subtract the X's. We're going to subtract the Y's and then we're going to subtract the Z's. So X1 minus X2, Y1 minus Y2, and Z1 minus Z2. Then what we're going to do is we're going to square the differences. So the differences between the X 
we're going to square the differences between the y we're going to square and the differences between the z values we are going to square which means that we are only going to have positive values so even if this turns out to be negative or this turns out to be negative or this one's negative when you square it you always end up with a positive value okay so it doesn't matter if this is a negative number or behind the wall or whatever okay you're always going to end up with a positive value then we add all of those squares once they're all added we take the square root and when you take the square root you basically end up with your distance so let me give you a very very simple example and let's go to the next slide here so if i have 0.1 and the coordinates are going to be 2 negative 4 and 8 and then p2 is going to be negative 6 2 and negative 3 we just have to put those into the formula that we just had so basically we subtract the x's so it's going to be 2 subtract negative 6 okay and then we're going to square everything so 2 minus negative 6 then we're going to have negative 4 minus 2 because it's positive so negative 4 subtract 2 then we're going to have 8 subtract negative 3 so 8 subtract negative 3 and we make sure we put these in brackets and basically square everything now don't forget two negatives right if you subtract a negative number it becomes positive so 2 subtract negative 6 becomes 8 negative 4 subtract 2 is going to be negative 6 and then 8 minus negative 3 is going to be 11 okay so square all of these they become positive values right 64 36 121 we add them all together and we take the square root and our answer is 14.87 approximately so let's do the same thing with the example we had downstairs and what i'll do is i'll bring those numbers up right now okay so I'm back here and I'm gonna give this a go right now and basically I'm gonna to have to measure the X Y Z location from these two particular points now I'm gonna do this kind of quick but it'll get us close enough and I've just got a simple uh, tape measure here that I'm gonna try so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure across this way and then I'm going to measure up and I'm gonna call this position here sort of my zero uh, y direction okay now I have to pick sort of which direction is which so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this direction will be y this direction will be x and then the up direction will be the z axis and if I need to switch them around because it's different in software or something like that then that's fine but when I'm just using the formula this should work out no problem so I'm just going to uh, read out some numbers here and then we'll see how this goes Okay, so that's about 30. I'll just pick round numbers and just make it easy on myself. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but it'll be close. Let's say it's about 37 from there. And then going down. We're coming up from the ground, so this will be my Z. And somewhere around the middle would be about oh, 150. I'll say 154. That's very rough and my y is going to be zero coming off of this way okay let me go over here so i need to measure to the center here so let me see if i just hang this up so i'll do my height first and roughly about the center i'm getting about 200 okay you can see this is not going to be highly accurate but it's close enough it'll be about 214 so about 214 uh, centimeters and then from this wall here which I'm calling my X okay if it's just up on this surface here then that's going to be about let's see here uh, looks like about 64 yeah about 64 and then from this wall here I'll have to figure that out and let me see here Somewhere about there okay so that is about 194 194 okay so I'm just doing it roughly to about the centimeter level and uh, I can kind of live with that so let's go back I'm going to calculate this and see what I get 
So I've taken the numbers that I measured in the room there between the little tape markers, and this is what they were. So for point one, we're saying it's 37,0154, and for point two, we're saying it's 64,194,214. So this is the distance formula. So again, I need to subtract the x's, subtract the y's, subtract the z's, square each of these, add them, and take the square root. So let's go ahead and do that. 37 minus 64, that's here. 0. Uh, subtract 194 that's here and 154 subtract 214 so that looks good there then we're going to um, just get the final result here so negative 27 negative 194 and negative 60. we square each of these and we start to get some big numbers so 729 37,636 and 3600 take the sum of all of this like this and then take the square root and this is just approximate okay it's approximately 205 centimeters which seems like a reasonable result and um, if we look at this uh, and we check it we'll probably find uh, with a laser scanner or something that will get something similar now what I'm going to do is go to a 3d program and we're going to bring up a point cloud we're going to take two points and then we're going to do this again except this time we're going to have decimals we're going to have more complicated numbers and we're not going to be approximate we're going to try to be very very precise and having point cloud data is going to be uh, really helpful for us so let me switch over to another program and then we'll come back and we'll check it out and do it again okay so i am in ferro zone 3d here and what i'm going to do is pick a couple of points and I'm going to record their coordinates and I'll measure between them in this program and this way I will have you know what the program is reporting as the actual number and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the calculation just like we did before so let me start by picking a couple of points and I don't really care where they are but I will make something up here uh, there's a point over here maybe I'll just do a point on here that's one point over there and maybe I'll pick something on the wall here, I guess. Eh, sure, why not? Maybe something here. Okay, so there's a second point that's sort of up. And what I want to do now is actually take a measurement between the two. So I'm just going to make a line, let's say. And I'm going to see if I can snap here. Actually, let me shut off the, uh, let me shut off all the snaps except for no point cloud. Good. So now I'm going to send snap to the center there and then snap to the center of this point here so let me just make sure that that's correct so this looks like it is in the center that's great and i'm going to go over here and check and that looks like it's in the center there as well okay great so if you check it here the length of this line or the distance between these two points it says it's 34.442 okay great so what i'm going to do is i'm going to record though the points okay so these two points and uh, we'll make a little calculation here all right so i'm going to punch in these numbers into the formula here and for p1 we had negative 12.694 9.692 and negative 0.382 and this is all in meters and then for p2 these were the numbers so about 13.01 negative 13.09 and 2.103 follow the exact same procedure and when we pick p1 or p2 there isn't any order so you can choose you can do p2 minus p1 or p1 minus p2 it doesn't matter what order so long as you are consistent so if you want to subtract the bottom here from the top or the top from the bottom you have to do the same order in each of the x y's and z's and so when we do that we're going to punch in all of these things and you know the biggest problem is really getting all these numbers right when you're punching it into a calculator and when you go through here you end up with 34.441 and if I switch back here to ferrozone 3d you'll see that we had uh, 34.442 so just between some rounding errors and stuff like that you know we have a one millimeter error there now there are some ways that you can make this more efficient and I actually have an excel file that I've made that will uh, just make life a lot easier so basically I punch in all the numbers here it tells me what the deltas are the differences between all of them I square them all I add them all and then I take the square root and that gives me the answer.
If you're interested in this, maybe what I'll do is I'll post it down below. But I think this is a really interesting way to just check your results. And if you're doing research, like for example, where you have a, a known position and then an estimated position, and it's just sort of floating in space. So for example, blood sink pattern analysis, you usually have a known coordinate, but you don't know where the other one is. Uh, or when you calculate it, it you know, there's no fixed point in space. So uh, it's just a coordinate. You can calculate the difference between the known and the calculated and that actually gives you the distance of the error so it can be a really really useful tool so that does it um, I'll try to link to this uh, file or if you want it just uh, type in the comments and then I can always put it down there so hope you enjoyed this one some cool little tips and calculating 3d distance see you next time on click 3d